best barbecue sauce recipe I've ever tried. Often barbecue sauce is just a modified version of ketchup with a little bit of paprika and cayenne in it. Uh, today I'm going to be making a better barbecue sauce that's based on fruit and soy sauce. We're going to start with some fresh fruit and you can use all kinds of different fruit. In the fall and late summer I would probably use apples or pears to do this. I've also used peaches, plums, you can use whatever fresh fruit you want. You want a solid two cups uh, of fruit. I'm going to use rhubarb today because it's rhubarb season and I've cut the rhubarb small because rhubarb tends to have long fibers in it. I'm going to add in two cups of rhubarb chopped. Next I have soy sauce. So here we have about a cup of soy sauce. I am using gluten-free soy sauce so this will be a gluten-free barbecue sauce. Then I have a solid cup of sugar, six cloves of garlic. I have some green onions or scallions or chives, a solid tablespoon of black pepper, two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar. And now for my heat, I'm gonna use some sriracha. This is about three tablespoons of sriracha, but you could also use sambal olek or any sort of like spicy chili type of um, flavoring. You could also just use chili powder or paprika or cayenne in this, but usually I use sambal olek or sriracha. Put that in. And then I'm going to use some maple. This is a really interesting maple that I'm going to use that is a uh, whiskey barrel aged. So it has a little bit of a smoky whiskey barrel flavor to it, but any maple syrup will do. If you don't have maple syrup, you could use corn syrup or you could use molasses. And I'm adding about 50 grams or about three solid tablespoons of that. So the next step is we're going to put this on the blender and we're going to blend it up nice and fine. Now we're going to put it into a pot. And we're going to bring this to a simmer. We're going to simmer it for about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, and then we're going to put it back in here. So we don't have to wash this. We're just going to leave this hanging out here. And this is a lot of sugar and stuff in it, so I don't want to cook it too hot. I'm just going to bring it up to a simmer. And then let it go for, like I said, 15, 20 minutes. And then we'll bring it back to the to the grinder. Now, at this point in time, if you wanted to make this uh, a bit more uh, Korean style barbecue sauce, you would add ginger and you would add some toasted sesame oil. So if you added three tablespoons of toasted, toasted sesame oil and a nub of ginger, you would grind that up in here and then you are going to get a more Korean style of barbecue sauce. Okay, so I have my barbecue sauce, it's darkened up, it's simmered for a while, and now I'm gonna put it back in the blender. And I'm gonna give it a good blend here to get it super smooth. So here we go. So it's cooked up and it's kind of a ruddy brown color right now, but that's the air bubbles. And when those air bubbles dissipate, it'll go back to a darker color uh, and it'll probably thicken up too. If this isn't thick enough for you, you could simmer it a little longer. Uh, it's gonna vary depending on what fruit you use. This has got a lot of um, sugar and salt in it. So it will last a few weeks in your fridge. I usually just put it in squirt bottles and then I have it around and I use it on a lot of different things. It's really good with vegetables and meats, like it's awesome on chicken, like a Korean fried chicken even, if you want to fry something. We use it on fried tofu. Um, it's really good, it's really versatile, it has a lot of zip to it. So I'm gonna let this cool down and then I'm gonna try a bit. Oh yeah, it's got tang and zip and heat. If you enjoyed this recipe, please consider hitting the like button and the subscribe button.